In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use Instant Forms in the Facebook Ads platform. Instant Forms are an extremely useful tool to use to generate leads. Instant Forms grab the user's information before they go to the landing page. So the likelihood of somebody actually filling out that form just goes up significantly. Also, Facebook and many other platforms already have that user's information. As soon as they click on the form, it auto-fills the data. So in many cases, that form is already filled by the time the user clicks on your ad, which really takes the effort out of the transaction and increases the likelihood of a conversion. Now, I know you're probably thinking, why would anybody submit if they don't really know much about the product. Well, the truth is they want to learn more about it, which is why they probably clicked your ad in the first place. In addition, if you have your Facebook Instant Forms hooked up to a CRM like HubSpot, you can automate a drip campaign so that as soon as somebody submits a lead form on Facebook, you can then send them a series of emails to continue nurturing them until they turn into an actual customer. So let's put three minutes on the timer, jump into the Facebook ads platform, and I'll show you how we can set up your instant forms for your next campaign. So first we're gonna go to our Facebook ads platform. Uh, once we're here, we'll go ahead and click create. Um, so we'll go ahead and create a new campaign and then we will scroll down to leads and we'll hit continue. And once we have created our new campaign, we can establish the settings for uh, the campaign and then we can move on to the ad set settings. And uh, the first thing we're gonna look at here is just make sure that our conversion location is on instant forms. And we'll, then we'll have the option to set a performance goal. So here we can maximize the number of leads. And in this case, Facebook will try to show the ad to as many people who are likely to share their contact info, or we can show ads to the, the, you know maximize the number of conversion leads. So uh, we'll go ahead and select maximize the number of leads. And then we'll go ahead and select our Facebook page. If you're doing this for the first time, you'll need to accept Meta's lead ad terms for this page. Um, so you can view those terms here. And um, so once you've read through that, you can come back here and select accept. So now that we're here, uh, we will go ahead and come down to where it says instant form. Uh, so this is where we can create an instant form. There is an option, if there's one that already exists, where you can actually duplicate that form, um, or you can create a brand new form. So here, uh, there are two different tabs here. There's content and then settings. We want, definitely want to take a look at both while we're going through this process. It's always good practice to name the form. So we'll just say test form uh, for video. Oh, and you can hear my dogs barking. So once we've named the form, we can customize the form type. So uh, we can go for more volume where basically we'll get, we'll aim for a form that is likely to attract uh, more form submissions, right? Uh, or we can go for a higher intent form, which, um, and, and you can see as I did that, it adds a review screen to the process. It kind of adds another step and it says, hey, this is kind of what um, you know, here, here were your selections and let's just make sure that we're okay with those. Or we can do a custom form where we can basically um, use different customizable sections to tell our brand story and, and it kind of um, enhances the experience here. Uh, for the sake of this video, I will just use a, um, a more volume type form. So once you've established your form type, you can then select a background image. So the background image is here, uh, and that you can, you can either make it the image from your ad creative that you utilized, or you can upload a specific image. Uh, the recommended size here is 1200 by 628, which is pretty similar to, um, to your newsfeed uh, dimensions. So you can upload a specific image if that image that you used on your ad specifically doesn't really go well with the form itself. Then you want to enter a headline like sign up today, or it can really be anything that you want it to be. For the description, you can decide if you want to make it a paragraph. I'd really like you to sign up Oop. for my product, right? And it will, um, it will basically create that text in a paragraph format or you can actually do a list where we can add um, sign up today, sign up later, free giveaway, right? You can add 
certain things um, to, you know, certain bullets to, uh, to the form here, if you wanted to just list a couple of things. Then we go into the questions section uh, and we can add various questions such as multiple choice questions, short answer questions, conditional questions, uh, or even an appointment request where people can select a time and meet. Um, so those are custom questions that, you know, that we can do and I'll just add one here uh, as an example. So the question is, what is your um, CRM, right? So maybe you want to, un maybe you have a product that, that integrates with HubSpot or Salesforce. So asking people what your CRM is, you know, what your customer relations management system, um, that's gonna be a pretty important question. Um, and then I doubt, actually I know, that Facebook uh, instant forms don't have that as a specific question that's default. So that's one question that we can use and, uh, and that's, that's there. So that will be a question that is asked before users go to the next stage. Those are the custom questions. Um, now we can look at our pre-fill questions. So this is the information that, that Facebook will pre-fill on the user's form as soon as they get to the, the form fill stage. Once a user hits next, they will go to the contact information and that's, that's where the pre-fill questions come up. So here, first we can enter a message. So enter your information below to receive updates weekly, right? So you have to add a description and just let people know kind of what you plan on doing with this information. So we can add email, phone number, street address, city, state, province, country, postcode, zip code, user information here. So we can do full name or we can separate first name and last name. You know, with the CRM that I use at work, uh, I think it's always good to, to separate and, you know, separate the first name and last name. Uh, we can also do demographic questions such as date of birth, gender, you know, marital status. I, I don't know why that would be important for, for what I typically market. Relationship status, military status. Also, there's work information, so what their job title is. Work phone number, work email is a good one, and company name is, is pretty, pretty relevant here. And then we have our national ID numbers. Um, so we can add, add things from this list. Since full name is selected, we'll want to take that off and then jump into user information, add first name. Maybe we add last name. We have email, but let's take that off too. And we'll add our work email. And I wanna know, you know what these job titles are because although we are focused on a specific um, persona, we want to just ensure that we're, we're getting the right people here. And then maybe we'll add the company name just so we can you know, know that ahead of time for our sales team. So once we've, we've added these questions, these will all be populated automatically by the Facebook platform, and then we can go to the next section, which is the privacy policy section. So here is where um, you can add a link to your privacy policy, and then you can add the text. So privacy policy, Oop, can't spell it today. And then you can actually add a custom disclaimer if you want. So if there is you know, a box that we need to check for GDPR reasons, uh, you can do that here. Then the user has the option to submit. They, you can add a message to, uh, to the end. So this is kind of like your landing page, so to speak. But if the user had submitted this uh, in, using the traditional flow where they see your ad, click to a landing page, you know, ultimately submit that form, and then they submit, and then they would go to a thank you page. That's kind of what this is right here. And looking at this, you can customize this message. Thanks, you're all set. You know, thanks for submitting. I wouldn't say that, but whatever you want it to be, right? So you can change that. You can modify the description as well. And you can also uh, modify this call to action button, which can either be call business, view website, or view file. Um, and then you can add a link to whatever that is. Um, one of the things to note here is that you can upload something. So if you wanted to uh, upload a white paper or something like that, you can add that media. This is a good way to do that by using the view file call to action button. Um, but in any other case, like say you wanted to just drive somebody to a landing page that's relevant to your offer, uh, you can use that view website 
call to action button and then drive people to to that link. And then for the call to action text, you can change this to anything, which I think is great. So, um, you know, learn more about our product, right? You could, you could change it basically to anything that you want to. So before you click publish, uh, one of the things to note is that as soon as you click publish, click publish, I said that correctly, <laughs> Um, you can't modify the form after it's been created. So the only thing you could do, say you made a mistake along the way during this process, the only thing you can do from here is to duplicate that form and then correct whatever mistake you made. So, you know, if, if you're not ready to publish, you can hit save draft and that's totally fine. We can access it later on or we can hit publish. Before we hit publish, what I want to cover is just some of the settings here. So. Assuming we're doing this in the United States, we're doing some advertising and collecting leads in the United States, um, you know, we'll want to keep our, our languages English. However, that's not always the case. Maybe we're um, collecting leads in the UK or maybe in Spain, um, you know, or in France, we would want to modify the language uh, here. Um, in addition to that, we have our sharing options here. So people who see our ad and see this form, um, you know, in some cases we want to, uh, you know, restrict it to only the people who, uh, who have seen our ad and are at this process or at this stage in the process. Um, in other cases, maybe we want to keep it open so that anyone can share this, this ad with other people, you know, and, and share this form specifically. Next, the field names are going to be really important. So if you are using a CRM like HubSpot, for instance, since we were talking about that earlier you want to ensure that your field names, i.e. the data that you're collecting from people specifically, match up to those um, on whatever CRM you're using. And that will make your life 100% easier. When people make that form submission, it will populate and create profiles where that information is in the right place. So next is the tracking parameters section. And this is extremely important, especially if you wanna track any actions that a user is taking on your website post form submission. So here we can add various parameters such as UTM campaign. And say this is the HubSpot integration, oops, ah, tool campaign that is taking place in 2023. Okay, now anytime somebody submits this form and lands on our website and keeps our browser open, you know, any actions that have, that have been taken after that, we can actually track that in our analytics platform. So we'll go ahead, now that we've established our, the content tab and we've set all the settings correctly for our settings tab, we are definitely ready to go ahead and hit publish. So we'll go ahead and hit publish. Now that we've hit publish, we can see that our form becomes available immediately and we can start using this for this campaign specifically. I strongly encourage you to use these lead forms in your next campaign. Test them out against your traditional method of collecting leads via landing page, and tell me what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. And if you like this video, hit that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit subscribe.